Okay, hello everyone, and welcome back to Pioneer. Uh, this time, instead of listening to me blather on while I attempt to fly a spaceship, I'm going to talk over some clips of me uh, playing the game. Because well, if I am uh, correct, then this will be the 25th video in uh, the series so far. And I thought I'd use this to, well, talk about some of the things I like about Pioneer, uh, some of the things I think could be better about Pioneer, and what's happening from now on. So, right, uh, this is the 25th video, I think. Uh, when I started this video, I expected that, our video series, I should say, when I expected, I expected to, uh, well, I expected to fail a lot more often than I do at the moment. Um, I remember pick when I first picked the game up, like, how do I do this? How do I fly this thing? You can use the autopilot, and I had, uh, I had figured out how to leave a planet, but flying two planets, that was something for the autopilot. So from that experience, you know, I had decided, I decided to call the series Frequently Failing, but as it turns out, I don't quite fail as much as I thought I would. So that's kind of a, <laughs> a mistake on my part. Maybe I'll, I'll change the name of it to Not Quite So Frequently Failing, but I still have more than enough failures. <laughs> Anyways, right, so uh, where are we in Pioneer at the moment? So, we've been taking some combat missions and uh, some of the uh, scouting missions to try and increase my uh, combat rating. And I've actually gotten that from harmless up to poor. I think I've gotten a little better at combat. I think. <laughs> uh... I, I'm still not entirely sure how to do it well. So, when I was figuring out how to fly in uh, Pioneer the first time, I looked up some videos online. So I thought, okay, well, videos have taught me how to fly. Maybe there's some videos on how to fight. So I tried looking some up. Not a whole lot there. So I instead went to look at some uh, Frontier videos, since Pioneer is based on Frontier. And uh, I actually found a good combat um, tutorial in for Frontier. So I've been trying to base my combat on what that video was about. And that video was pretty much just to uh, decrease your approach speed to zero and orbit around your target. All right, sounds good. Uh, for me, though, what that has ended up being is decreasing their approach speed to zero just inside the weapon's uh, effective range. <laughs> so, right, with the, the laser I've got on my skipjack at the moment, that would be me slowing down at just, just past 20 kilometers from the target and shooting from there. <laughs> And it works, it works, uh, but the laser kind of, well, I, I'm feeling the limits of the laser at the moment. You know, it works well against shields, and it works well against smaller ships, but the bigger the ships get, the more tonnage the hulls have, the more health they have, and it just takes forever to... <laughs> to shoot down a ship with a laser when you know, their health is, is enormous. It's like trying to grill a steak with a butane lighter. It happens, it works, but it takes forever. So I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is that the blaster weapons, though you know, not quite as easy to aim, are probably the better way to go about fighting. I you know I know they have a higher skill floor, 
but with that higher skill floor, you know, you get that higher skill ceiling, a higher damage ceiling, I suppose. So, uh, I've been thinking about trading my laser in for one of those kind of weapons, but I still gotta think about it. I've also installed another shield generator on my ship, because while I was doing some of those combat missions, well, I found this big ship that just absolutely chunked my shields with this blue stuff it was shooting. And that was with two generators. So, uh, right? <laughs> two generators aren't weren't pulling their weight. So, I'm going to try it with three generators this time. Don't know how well that'll work, but you know, we, we don't know until we try. And I think the blue stuff was one of the plasma weapons. But I'm not sure, because plasma weapons in Pioneer are really expensive. I mean, double or triple the, the price of a laser, even. Maybe even more. I don't have the prices in front of me, so I, don't, I can't say for sure. But they're expensive. So, uh, right, they're pretty much the end game kind of weapons. Right, uh, I'm looking to protect my ship from those. And, you know, if I could get some for my own ship, that would be good too. Right? I think the plasma weapons count as blaster kind of weapons, so you have to go through the whole leading of the enemy ships. But, yeah. You know, trying that out and then trying uh, the orbiting techniques from the Frontier video is something I'm going to have to do later on. So, uh, that that's for the future. But another thing I've noticed about the combat is that even though there are certain missions where you're more or less guaranteed to find uh, an enemy ship, you know, sometimes it's kind of disappointing, it's not really rewarding to destroy these things. And I think, for me, that's because there are no bounties in the game. Some of the missions will give you bonuses if you destroy all the enemy ships that are in the area of the mission, like the uh, scanning missions or the, the scouting missions. You kill all the ships, you blow all the ships up, and you get some bonus. But for deliveries or shipping missions where you take cargo to other stations, now, if you get jumped while doing one of those missions, there's no reward for destroying the enemy, aside from getting away with your life, which is probably a decent reward in itself. But one of the things that uh, the original Frontier and Elite and uh, Elite and even Elite Dangerous did that I think Pioneer could use uh, is the bounty. So some ships would have bounties, and they're not always uh, hostile ships, but almost all the hostile ships would have bounties. And it doesn't have to be a whole lot. It didn't, it's not always a whole lot. From a few credits to uh, right, your master criminals are going to be like a thousand, ten thousand credits. So, it doesn't have to be a whole lot, but if there were some bounties in Pioneer, I would feel better. I'd feel a little more rewarded for taking on some of the dangerous missions. Because at the moment, it's just... Take the mission, uh, blow the ship up, and get paid a thousand credits or so. You know, having a bounty on any kind of enemy ship would sweeten that deal a little bit. It doesn't have to be a huge amount. It doesn't have to be something that doubles or triples the, the amount of the contract. But, you know, a hundred or so credits could make a difference. So, yeah, you know, a bounty system for, for hostile ships would be nice. I think the game doesn't even give you a bounty if you go and uh, try and pirate stuff. So, and you go and pirate thing, pirate other ships, well, yeah, you should be getting a bounty for that. I know the game gives you a bounty for shooting your weapons inside uh, uh, 
space station space or airspace. But outside of that, you know, there's not a whole lot of crime. It's really, really a wild west. If some you pirate somebody, you shoot them and you steal their cargo, nothing happens to you. You've got all this cargo and you are free to go. So I, I think some bounties, not only for NPCs, but uh, the player could probably do the game well. Some kind of crime and punishment system. Another thing that I think uh, Pioneer could benefit from is... Well, this one's a little easier than a crime and punishment system, but it's, uh, it, it's kind of hard to find your route. Right? I mean, you have to go into the map screen to find your hyperspace route. And I think if there was a button in the upper left, like uh, the comms chatter button or the scanner button or your cargo button, there's another button up there that showed your current hyperspace route, that would make flying a little bit easier. Because at the moment, you have some long hyperspace route jump into a system, okay, how many more jumps do you have? Okay, let's go to the map. Alright, ah, uh, yeah, the X amount of jumps, okay, go back to the pilot, I'll go back to the, the main screen, okay, let's jump, 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 how many jumps was it? Oh, back to the map, okay, I'm gonna have to scoop soon, okay, back to the pilot seat, jump, jump, alright, if there was a a route information button somewhere in the pilot screen HUD, I think that would make the game a whole lot better. Well, not a whole lot better, but, uh, you know, a nice a nice um, improvement on uh, the way it is now. Another thing, and this is a hard one. This is a really, really hard one. Uh, another thing that I think I don't think that I think is the way it's improved. Another thing that I would enjoy if the game had would be a bigger community. So right now, Pioneer is comparatively a fairly small community of players. And you can go onto the forums or Reddit and the, the game subreddit or some related forums like the elite official elite dangerous forums people still talk about uh, Oli and Pioneer there too it's not a very active place and the discussions aren't very very active and a bigger community would mean a more active community not necessarily bigger, but more active would mean you know more discussions more people enjoying the game and that would be great more people to talk to about the game right I like Pioneer you want to talk I want to talk to people about it but with the relatively small community it's not it's not happening right? only for what it is still has a relatively large community uh, and elite being the current I mean dangerous being the current active in the game. You know that has a fairly large community. But Pioneer is unfortunately small, and I think it deserves a better community. It deserves a bigger, more active community. And how do you build this bigger, more active community? Like Pioneer has a fairly large hurdle for its entry. Right? I took forever. It feels like it took forever for me to get over this hurdle. It took... Well, what would you call it? It took some really wanting to learn how to play the game. Uh, it took that feeling for me to actually get into the game. And once that, once I cleared that hurdle, it really clicked for me. It really felt good. But that's a hard hurdle for a lot of people to get over. And you can go on to uh, 
some of the, the forums, some of the discussions about Pioneer and the parts that are active are a lot of the times people asking, well, how do I do this? How do I fly? And, you know, Pioneer is, doesn't really explain that very well. You know, Elite has a tutorial. Elite Dangerous has a tutorial. Most of these games ease entry into the game with tutorial missions, tutorial area kind of places. And I think Pioneer could benefit from that. You know, a more developed world could also help in that aspect too. Because as it is, the, the world of Pioneer, you know, it's big and it's huge and it's empty and I love it, but there's not a whole lot of story there. And I know Frontier is not really a game about story, the original Frontier. Uh, so Pioneer is not really a game about story. But neither is Elite or the original Elite. And yet, and yet, Elite and Elite, the original Elite, are fairly well developed. Right? You have this flavor text, you know, uh, you often see stuff like Zero G Cricket or, or Dangerous Apple Teas, or well, I don't think it's an Apple Tea, but, <laughs> you know, uh, the, the silly flavor text and the menu screens, the map screens about the planets and systems you can visit in Elite and Elite. And none of that really exists in Pioneer. You know, some of this silly stuff, it, it helps build the universe. It helps put the universe together. And, and it's kind of circular in that way. Uh, right, you have this universe, and you have players in the universe. And they make stories. They put their characters, they put themselves into the game. And they have these adventures, and that builds adventures. And the adventures come back and build into the world. The world builds the players, the players build the world, the world builds players, the players build the world. So it's it's circular like that. And I think Pioneer could certainly use some more develop development in uh, its world. Another thing in that world development that really helps, I think really helped with Elite, really helped with Elite was the novellas, right? The original Elite had uh, Turning of the Wheel, I think it was called. The original novella that introduced the Dark Wheel and uh, that hidden planet and a bunch of stuff that really wasn't in the game. But players picked that up and they they ran with it. So they, they'd go into the game and they look for this stuff and they they find the systems in the story and they go there and they they play in this in these story systems even though the story didn't really have an effect on the game the game was really only uh, setting uh, table dressings for the story but you know it helps a lot it gives the players some well it, it gives them this story this stuff happening in the background that they might not directly be a part of, but it's happening in the same universe. It feels good for that to be there. You know, uh, it was something that something really carried on right up until Elite Dangerous. Frontier had uh, stories from the frontier, a bunch of different vignettes about things going on in the universe, and uh, First Encounters had something similar. Elite Dangerous had a number of officially authorized novels and uh, I think a few of them even had uh, some adaptations some kind of radio drama adaptations and even Olit Olit has a series of you know, novellas a series of short stories about the universe and those really help what does Pioneer have? nothing Unfortunately. But once again, this is circular, right? You have an underdeveloped universe. How do you make a story with an underdeveloped universe? Well, the authors are going to have to do some. Well, uh, they're going to have to take some liberties with the universe. And those liberties 
Well, they, they feed back into the world universe. They feed back into the game and help build up that universe. Okay, so now you've got the built universe built up a bit. Go back to the stories. Oh, build more. And it builds more. And it builds more. You know, they feed into each other, and it's a nice circular feedback loop. You know, feedback loops aren't good, but this in this case, you know, they're the way to build a universe. So you have a fully fleshed out universe. You have uh, an easier way to enter the game. And you make it attractive and fun for new players to try and get over that hurdle. And these stories help them along, right? You read the story. Okay, I want to play in that universe. But I got to go through this, this tutorial mission because I have no idea how to fly. So you go through the tutorial mission, you get over it, you feel good, you get in the universe, and then you start making your own stories. And that gets feed that feeds back into the universe building. It feeds back into the attraction to new players. So yeah, I you know this fully fleshed out universe, a little more fully fleshed out universe, definitely help build the community. And that would be something I'd like Pioneer to have, because I think it deserves it. Pioneer is an enjoyable game. You know, I really like flying around in this giant universe with all these different factions and combat and making deliveries and just having a lot of fun. You know, you leave the planet surface and there's the Milky Way in the sky. And, you know, it just feels right that I've it's hard to explain, but you know that it it feels right. It clicks, and you know I think I think a lot of people would. Well, I think there are some people that that would echo with, but because the community is small, it it doesn't reach them. So I think I think the game would benefit. I think Pioneer would benefit from having a slightly larger community. And fleshing out the world, fleshing out uh, the player entrance experience would help. So yeah, playing you. Um, I'm having fun. I'm not perfect at it yet, but I, I'm having a lot of fun with it. So I'm going to continue this. I think I'm going to be slowing down a bit because right now real life work is starting to get in the way of all the things I want to do so uh, it might slow down a bit but for the time being right, we're going to continue on exploring the universe uh, making trades, doing some combats, improving our ship and just seeing where the universe takes us so uh, once again thank you for listening to my ranting and raving well ranting at least uh that's it for now we'll see you all later goodbye